Good morning, and welcome to Celebration Lutheran Church. As we gather together to celebrate and remember uh, Christ's baptism, it's also an opportunity to remember our own baptism, and we'll have a special liturgy as we we celebrate and remember our baptisms. But it's good to be gathered together. Um, We won't be talking about dreams, I promise, for a long time. Our sermon series has ended, and we pick back up in the season of Epiphany. And uh, as I mentioned, we'll we'll remember our baptism as we celebrate Christ. Um, But it's good to be gathered together this morning as we gather into this place, into this time. And so we welcome you into this uh, sacred sacred space as we worship together. Uh, a word of gratitude, thanks to Kate Mondragon for being here this morning and, and offering your gifts and talents as, uh, and the gift of music. So we thank you, Kate. Thanks for being here. Um, just a couple quick announcements. Um, a Sunday school is, is, is uh, started last week, is back and rolling. We encourage you to join and hop on that. Uh, youth activities have resumed as well. Um, and Adult Forum uh, picks, starts again uh, this Sunday. We're looking at um, uh, Luther's, one of early, Luther's earliest writings and um, one of his best, in my opinion, uh, Freedom of a Christian. And so it's the 500th anniversary of that writing. And so I uh, encourage you to click that link following our worship in your bulletin and join us. It should be a good discussion. should be a, a robust Lutheran conversation. So we encourage you to to join us. Also, just a reminder to Weekly Word, which is our weekly Bible study, um, Tuesday mornings at 10 and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. Those have resumed. We took a little bit of break during the holidays, and um, so we just encourage folks to join. It's a great way to connect with folks and, and uh, connect your faith to your, your daily lives, so encourage folks to join us um, on those times whichever works best for you, but it's good to, it's good to be gathered together. Um, we'll take just a brief moment to quiet our hearts and minds as we, as we prepare for worship this morning. We begin this morning with uh, the gathering and a call to worship. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who shines among us. Amen. And trusting in God's promise of forgiveness this day, let us take a moment to confess our sin against God and against one another. Most merciful God, We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. And in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for His sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, I, uh, and by His authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let us remember our baptism. The Christian life begins in water, the waters of baptism. Here God gives us our true identity, our real life, and our Christian calling, our daily bath, and our eternal destiny. Here in the water, God reached across centuries of time and space to to claim us and to place on us God's very own name. The Christian life should Always be a return to this baptism. Daily we are called to die to sin and rise to new life in Jesus Christ. 
We hear in the Scriptures that we are buried, therefore, with Him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. As baptized believers, Christ sends us out, sends us into our everyday lives to serve Him by loving our neighbors. And as fathers and mothers, husbands and wives, parents and children, teachers and students, employers, employees, in every walk of life, we are called to be Christ's person, each in our own calling. Christ gave himself for us on the cross, and now under his cross, we are called to give ourselves in love for others. So we remember our baptism and Christ this day. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray together our prayer of the day. Holy God, creator of light and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace this day and transform us by your Spirit that we may follow after your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'll now encourage all the young folks, all our children, to gather, to come forward and gather around the screens, however you're watching, computer, phone, tablet, TV, come gather as Mr. Nathan shares the word with us this morning. something with you today. Um, I have a really special photo frame. There's some really good photos in here, and I'll come show you really close, okay? Pastor's going to have to help me from this side. special day. It was a really fun, special day for us. So when we look at this picture of his baptism, these pictures remind us all these great memories we have. And it reminds me of how much I'm pleased and how much I love my family and how much I love to share all these wonderful things. And pictures do a great job of that. I like this frame too. It's a cool frame. But what these pictures do is they help show that. And you know what? We have pictures everywhere. And in fact, with our families, we have like every month we create a new folder on a Google Drive and we have like, I think there's a couple where there's like a thousand pictures of both of our boys in there. So we are really pleased with our family and I'm pleased to do all these pictures of these special moments, right? When he's being baptized, I take pictures on his birthday, I'm going to take pictures and probably be crying when he comes here for preschool next, next fall, right? All these wonderful things. And we're taking pictures of Ollie as he's starting to learn to stand up and he's getting ready to walk soon. All those things. All these things that's making me go, oh man, there's a lot of happening with these kids. But it's also really exciting, right? I get to share these wonderful things with you and show you how pleased I am and how happy I am and how much I love my family. And so it makes me think of what we're, what we're talking about today. We're talking about the baptism of Jesus, Right? We're talking about how he was baptized by John and what happens when he was baptized, the heavens open up and and God's voice speaks and says that Jesus is, is his son. This is my son is what he said. And I love him. He's my beloved. 
And he's saying that to Jesus as well. He's saying, you are my son, you are my beloved. With he, I am well pleased, right? What is that first thing he says? That first thing he says is, this is my son, right? Just like I was showing all these wonderful pictures of my son, and I've got a whole bunch more of both of my, my sons at home that I love to share. It's showing that God is pleased with Jesus and that he sent Jesus for us he sent Jesus for us to save us, to save us from our sin and from all sorts of things, right? So God is saying, here he is for you. Just like I'm saying, here is my son, I'm excited, and I love to share that with you. God is so excited to share Jesus with us. And we are also God's children. God gave us Jesus to remind us the love that he has for us. Okay, so today, remember, the baptism of Jesus and remember your baptism. I remember mine, and I remember Jonah's, and hopefully we can baptize Oliver soon. All these wonderful things that, that we get to share with God. And baptism to me says God is choosing you. God loves you. God is there for you. And he's always there for you. And he gave his son to say, look, I'm here, and so is my son. So just remember that, that God is well pleased with you, just as he was pleased with Jesus. So remember all of those, those wonderful things and share all those pictures that you have and have fun with those too because I love sharing all the pictures of my family. All right, so we're going to pray. You guys ready? We'll hold our hands and bow our heads. Dear God. Oh, I'm sorry. Repeat after me. I forgot that part. Let's try this again. Dear God, help us to remember that we are all your children. And that you love us as you love your son, Jesus, our Savior. Thank you and amen. All right. Thanks, guys. So good to see you. We'll see you later. Thank you, Nathan. We'll continue this morning with our Old Testament reading, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, uh, continuing through verse 5. And we, we start at the beginning. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. While a wind from God swept over the face of the waters, then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. There was evening, and there was morning. The first day. Here ends our reading. The Holy Gospel comes to us from Mark chapter 1, verse 4 through 11. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to John and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. And now John, John was clothed with camel's hair leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey, and he proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And in those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice from heaven said, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. Here ends our Gospel reading. I'd like
like to begin this I'd like to begin this morning with a fun story. And as I joked at the top of the hour, we're no longer in our sermon series about dreams, and today, today we focus on baptism. But I'd like to begin with a fun story that takes place in Princeton, New Jersey. Princeton, New Jersey. There's a legendary tale about the renowned scientist Albert Einstein, who happened to be walking in front of a local inn, and he was mistaken for a bellboy by a wealthy woman who had just arrived in a luxury sedan. She orders him to carry her luggage into the hotel, and according to the story, Einstein, well, he does so. He receives a small tip and then continues on his way to his office to ponder the mysteries of the universe. Now, whether it's true or not, I find the story delightful, and perhaps one of the reasons is precisely because we savor from the beginning, we savor from the beginning a secret that the woman does not know. The strange-looking, ruffled little man is the most celebrated intellect of our time. Can you imagine him carrying a suitcase up for this woman up a flight of stairs? Some stories gain their power from our knowing the story's secret from the start. And this is where we find ourselves this morning, because the Gospel of Mark is such a story. The secret of Mark's Gospel is the identity of Jesus Christ. In the very first sentence of the Gospel, Mark lifts the veil and lets us know the whole secret when he says, this is the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Jesus is the Son of God. That's the secret. And lest we miss it, the hidden truth is confirmed in the story's opening episode, if you will. Our passage today, when Jesus, coming out of the waters of baptism, sees the Holy Spirit coming on Him like a dove, and the heavens are torn open, and the voice of God speaks the secret. You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. Now God knows the secret, Jesus knows the secret, and now, because Mark lets us in on it, we know the secret too. Jesus is the Son of God, and now, as the Scriptures, and we'll look at the whole Gospel of Mark this next year, it's amazing to see how the story unfolds, especially because almost no one else in the story is able to discover the secret. The authorities mistake Jesus for a troublemaker. And that's probably putting it kindly. Of course, he's labeled the criminal later. The people confuse him with other prophets of past. Moses, Elijah, even his disciples are blind to the full truth of who he is. Ironically, in the middle of the story, only the demons who Jesus has come to destroy recognize the secret of who Jesus is. That he is the Son of God thing is, he doesn't look like the Son of God, right? Like the genius Einstein dragging the heavy suitcase of a wealthy woman up those stairs of the hotel. Jesus does not look like who he really is. It's part of the reason the secret remains hidden in the gospel. Why doesn't Jesus look like the Son of God? That's because he suffers. And that seems unlikely of God, right? The crucified God. Jesus is the suffering Son of God, and that's a hard secret to learn. Take Peter, for example. When when asked, Peter answers, yes, you are the Christ, you are the Messiah. Does Peter know the secret? No, not really, because we know Jesus immediately begins to tell them the whole secret, that he must face suffering, rejection, and death. And as the famous story goes, Peter rebukes Jesus. Of course, then Jesus tells him to get behind him because Peter doesn't understand the secret. It's hard to understand that God would suffer and die. Now, it's easier for us. We're on this side of the cross some 2,000 years later. But this is why Mark tells us the secret in the beginning. He wants us to know that Jesus is the Son of God because when they drive the spikes into his flesh and they taunt him to come down from the cross, guess what Mark wants us to remember? The secret. 
that appearance and reality, that's, that's all part of it. Because the one who appeared to be rejected is in reality the one in whom God is well pleased. The one who appeared to be deserted by all is in reality the beloved. And the one who appears powerless in death is the one in whose power all shall be saved. That's the secret of baptism. And it's the secret in which all Christians share through our own baptism. Because in the baptism of Jesus, the secret of, I, of his identity is not only revealed, but nothing that appears thereafter, not even the spit and nails and blood of Golgotha, can take that reality away. In our baptism, it's the same. The secret of our identity is revealed. We are children of God. We are beloved. We, we matter. We count. And nothing that appears thereafter can take that reality away. For in Christ Jesus, writes Paul in Galatians, you are all children of God through faith. For as many of you who were baptized into Christ have now put on Christ. You see, in baptism, the secret is out. The truth is known. There's no need to fear. Come what may, because no matter what happens in life, to us, against us, in us, through us, around us, we are God's beloved, God's very own. And God has placed us here, created and called and blessed. God delights in you, in us. You know, this week, it reminds me, especially this week, there's, in, a, in the autobiographical book, Creative Dislocation, Robert McAfee Brown remembers a day, a Sunday in 1960 when he participated in the Lutheran worship service in East Berlin, only a short time before the Berlin Wall was constructed. And there were not many people present, for the church attendance was viewed by suspicion of the state. And the, Earth, and the East German Republic had developed secular alternatives to replace all of the rituals of the church. And nonetheless, there was a young couple who were there in attendance at the service. They were there to worship, but also to present the child for the sacrament of baptism, and Brown was amazed. Why, he wondered, why would they jeopardize their future and that of their child by insisting on this ancient ritual of baptism when a secular alternative was readily and painlessly available? Brown concluded that their very act of bringing their baby to church is and was a public statement of their values and their priorities. They engage in significant risk because of their faith. And in the face of quiet public courage, Brown wrote that he truly felt unworthy. My friend, you see, this couple knew the secret about their child which no secular tyranny could take away, that what they held in their arms was a child of God. The secret of the story is let out at the beginning, and nothing in all of creation, as the scriptures say, neither death nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, can change that story. They held in their arms a child of God, baptized in the very name of the one whose secret we carry with us. The love and grace of Jesus Christ. So dear celebration, wherever you find yourself this day, this week, this time, maybe you're in the struggles of life, the struggles of difficulties of this time, or politics, Maybe it's a dark time for you personally, but maybe not. Wherever you are, may you be washed clean in remembering your baptism this day. Remembering Christ's baptism. Because just as in life, Mark's story reminds us of the richness of baptism. This brief, simple episode lifts up the tensions of faith and life. The king who does not look like one. 
the one who will be who will baptize who is baptized and the one whose ministry brings life also brings him death and in light of those images dynamics of the unfolding biblical drama begins to make sense in our lives because we're offered a glimpse of what this good news is all about life death life Today, God, God claims you and says, you are my beloved. With you, I am well pleased. For we gain the story's secret from the very start. And thank goodness, thank God for that. And let us carry that secret. Let us carry it with us through our whole lives. Amen. Invite the congregation to join in our hymn of the day. Shall we gather at the river? We'll continue this morning with, with a word of prayer, prayers of intercession. Each uh, petition will conclude with, let us pray. The congregation is invited to join in prayer with, have mercy, O God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we pray for the church throughout the world and its leaders, that guided by your Spirit, we may proclaim the forgiveness of sins. Gracious God, we Pray for the nations of the world and their leaders. Their labor is busy both day and night. And we also pray for peacemakers amid strife. God, inspire all people to use their strength wisely. And gracious God, we also pray for our nation, our leaders, for its citizens. For we are in need, gracious God. Our spirits are weighed down with fear. Our bodies feel as fragile as the dust in which we come from. And all that we've trusted seems hidden from sight. And although this moment has come upon us, we trust that you have not forgotten us. And in this time, it's hard to trust our own power or strength, but, but rather, may we turn to, to you and trust in your steadfast love in every generation. Gracious God, show us your face in this time of trial and remind us of your faithfulness. Remind us of our calling. And save us for the sake of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. 
Gracious God, we pray for wilderness and water, wind and wild creatures, and all living things on, on this earth and your creation. That your goodness is revealed through creation and, and that faithful stewards rise up and care for all that you have made. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Gracious God, we pray for the sick and those who provide medical care, for those imprisoned and those who show them mercy. We pray for the lonely and those who provide companionship, and we pray for all who suffer this day. Gracious God, especially we continue to lift up those affected by this pandemic, those sick, those on the verge of death, those who have died. Gracious God, it's, it's a tragedy what's happened. Be with families who are grieving. Be with medical professionals who continue to care and provide healing and service to those in need. Gracious God, we also pray for those. Gracious God, we, we lift up those names. We name out loud or silently in our hearts before you now. Pray for David, Jeannie, for Connie. Pray for Paul and his mother. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. And most merciful God, hear our prayers this day. Hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share that peace with one another if you're gathered together with folks. Now prepare for communion. We'll continue this morning with Holy Communion, the sacrament. I invite you to get out those communion kits that you have received and picked up from church and uh, we'll continue this morning with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and our praise. And it is indeed right, our duty and our great joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, of redemption, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when He comes to judge the world in righteousness. And Holy One, You are the beginning and the end, the giver of, of life. And blessed are You for the birth of creation. Blessed are You in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are You for Your promise to Your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will and call. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. For in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread. He blessed it and he gave thanks. He broke it, giving it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given and broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, he blessed it and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is part of the, the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And, and so therefore, with this bread and this cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from, from death to life as, as together we pray the prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. My friends, if you are receiving this sacrament with others at home, speak aloud these words to one another. But if you are in solitude, 
hear my voice now as the external, the external word of invitation and grace. This is the body of Christ given and broken for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. My friends, come, the table is ready. These are the gifts of God for the people. And now celebration, receive this blessing. May these precious gifts of Christ's body and blood strengthen you and keep you in God's grace this day. Amen. Let us pray our final prayer. God of great abundance, we give you thanks for your promise to provide enough for all, enough for creation. Make us stewards of your generosity, prophets of your plenty, and growers of your goodness, so that the whole world might taste manna from heaven and bread broken in the name of Christ, who is our salvation. Amen. And now celebration, receive the benediction, this final blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy, and the Lord look upon you with favor and bring you to peace this day. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My friends, today we're reminded of our baptism. We're reminded power in in that that baptism baptism, and that that the the secret, the the good good stuff, the good good news that we are beloved, we are God's children, well, we we get get that right at the beginning. beginning. So So go in peace this day, celebrate Jesus and serve the community. Thanks be to God. God God bless y'all. Take care. See you next week.